My first tip is make it known that you are available and wanting to marry. Because, you know, often uh, ladies are a bit scared to let people know that they're looking for a husband or, you know, maybe pride can kick in and they don't want people to know that they're looking. Because why? Because people who are of the world, people who don't have the same understanding that we do and have compassion on people that want to follow God's will, which I'll get into in a moment, will we'll say, oh, you know, you're, you're desperate, you're clucky. So a lot of uh, ladies will be scared or be too proud to let people know that they're available or that they are wanting to marry. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be married. So don't let these insults of being desperate or I don't know what, they, what else they call people, desperate or um, clucky. These are the ones I can think of, you know, where you want to be a mother, you want to be married. Look what it says here in 1 Timothy 5. Paul is saying here to, to the women that are not married, or have been, have been uh, widowed in this instance, so they, they are unmarried. He says here, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adver adversary to spe speak reproachfully. Now, the, is there any confusion about this verse? There's no confusion about what God wants for a young lady. But how many young ladies in Christian churches these days are saying, I don't know what God's will is for my life. I don't know what God wants me to do with my life. What, what is the will of God for me? When it's, when it's written in plain, plain English right here, it says, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Right? As though if you don't do these things, the adversary is going to say you're doing the wrong thing. Right? Now, you, knowing this verse is in the Bible, when somebody calls you desperate or calls you clucky, now you, should, you should wear that as a badge of honour, right? Because the fact that they identify that you want to be married, that you want to bear children and guide the house, it's a badge of honour because that is what a woman should be seeking to do, right? Because this is the will of God. This, this means that you're a woman that wants to seek the will of God. You want to do what God has called a woman to do, and that is to marry and bear children and guide the house. Now, a lot of people, as soon as they hear this in our day and age, it's very uncomfortable because we live in a day and age where people do not value being married. You know, we live in a day and age where people do not value being a mother. People do not value having children. Instead, you know, we live in a day and age where people want to go work and they want to go have a career and be the president of the United States and following follow Hillary Clinton's footsteps, right? But this is the day and age we live in because they do not value these things. But this is not what God values. What God values is being a mother, being a wife and having children. You know, it always boggles my mind you know, even somebody who does want to do those things, that wants to work and have a career and all these things, because most of the time women that go into the workforce and give up having children or put their children in daycare, they're usually working quite entry level jobs. You know, a lot of the people that I know, like they're in, they're in customer service or an admin assistant, and you just think like, why, why would I leave looking after my children to go answer emails and answer phone calls? You know, they say like, you know, I, I, I want to get fulfilled. I want to I wanna be an independent woman and, and go out and work. And then, and then all that happens is they go and they sit in front of a computer all day and they do what I do, which is answer emails and answer phone calls. And the only reason why that, 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 that job gives me any reason is because I'm looking after my family. So like, why would a woman want to leave looking after the family to do what a man is doing only to do that to look after his family? You know? so, so not only that do, do, is, the, is uh, that, that mindset of, you know, why would you give up something much more valuable, which is taking care of children, having, having the freedom to go where you want, not having to clock in and clock out, put on a uniform, to go clock in and clock out, put on a uniform, and sit in front of a computer and answer phone calls and type emails. You know, like that, 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 you know my, my job is not as fulfilling as Elizabeth's job, but it's fulfilling because I do it because I'm trying to provide for my family. Not only that, you know, Jesus said, what shall profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? So a soul is much more valuable than any riches that anybody could earn. And, you know, you say, oh, well, you know, they're not, no, my, my daughter or my wife, she's not, she's not just some entry-level person. She's a manager, she's a CEO, she's the president of the United States. It doesn't matter how much power or how much money you can gain, that position is not anywhere more valuable than being a mother. Because one of your children is more valuable than all the riches. You know, all the iPhones. It doesn't matter if you're the next Steve Jobs. All the iPhones and all the billions of dollars that you can make is not as valuable as one child that you're looking after. And that's why when you see this verse, don't think, oh, that's bondage. 
That's just men trying to oppress women and keep them in the home and, and get them to, you know, they don't want them to be anyone or anything. No, no, we want people to marry and bear children and guide the house because we want women to be something. We want them to be something of value. We want them to do the most important thing in their life, the most valuable thing in life, and that is to be a woman and a mother. So for a woman, you know, don't, don't get discouraged when people call you desperate or call you clucky because that, that's, that's what you should be doing, right? It's kind of like when somebody, you're a Christian and somebody calls you zealous or fanatic or crazy. You're like, good, because that means I'm different. I'm doing the right thing, right? I'm being persecuted for the name of Christ. It's a badge of honor that you, that you should wear. <clears throat> so, ex you know, expose yourself to people. Let people know that, you're, that you want to be married, that you want to, uh, you know, have children. And let people know. And, you know, go along to social events. You know, get, 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 expose yourself, you know, uh, socially, right? <laughs> expose yourself socially. You know, not the wrong way, all right? Let, pe let people hook you up with friends, you know? Don't be so proud to, like, you know, not let people, you know, say, hey, I know this guy. And go, like, oh, you know, it's not, you know, just, just go along with it and, and go meet some people. You've got, you got nothing to lose. So, you know, make it known that you're available. Second tip for the ladies, you know, don't lead the relationship. You know, don't, don't seek after a man and then, you know, always prompting him. You know, if you're the one always prompting him, you're the, always the one that wants to bring up the Bible, you're always the one that's calling him to go out, you're leading the relationship. Don't do that because that, 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 it's just unwise because you want to marry a leader. You want to marry a man that is taking charge. You don't want to be the mother of this man and marry somebody that you have to mother the rest of your life. You know, at the same time, you know, ladies, don't be too hard on guys. You know, it's hard enough as it is already when a guy has to approach a lady and face rejection. So don't be so hard on him. You know, don't, don't, you know if a guy comes to you and he makes a fool of himself or whatever and, and he gets rejected, you know, don't go tell all your buddies and tell everyone and make fun of him and, and, and lower him in the, in the eyes of all your friends because he's had to open himself up to go and approach you and now you've just destroyed your brother in Christ in the eyes of all the other girls. So, you know, be loving. You wouldn't want somebody to tear you down after you've had a heartbreak. So don't tear uh, somebody else down. Uh, so number two, don't, don't lead the relationship. You know, make, you want to marry somebody uh, who's a leader, uh, not somebody who's a follower, or somebody that's complacent. Because if they're complacent when they're in love with you, how much more complacent are they going to be when, when you're married for four or five years, right? <clears throat> so just something to keep in mind. And what about else I got here first? Peter, three. All right, the last tip for, I've got for a woman is uh, here in 1 Peter 3, we'll just read first. Likewise, ye wives, be in, subject, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid <coughs> with any amazement. And my last tip here just has to do with this verse. Now, a couple of things is... I just want to mention here. Now, it says here in um, verse 4, let it, oh, verse 3, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on apparel. Now, I don't believe this verse is teaching that it's wrong to, um, you know, do up your hair or put on jewelry or, or, you know, wear nice clothing, right? What it's saying here is this is not what should adorn you. And what does it mean to adorn something? It means to make it beautiful. Right? Like a bride adorned for a husband. She's adorned on that day because she's, she's dulled up a bit, right? To, to be beautiful. But the Bible's saying here, like, don't let what is beautiful about you be the outward appearance. What's beautiful about you should be the inward appearance. And, uh, and ultimately, that is what makes a woman beautiful. Because you guys know, it doesn't matter how beautiful a girl is. If inside she's a terrible person, she's ugly. You know, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter how, how beautiful she is. And at the same token, even though you may not be a supermodel, if you have the inner man, that meek and quiet spirit, you will be, you will, 
Ah, you will be more beautiful in the eyes of a spiritual man. So don't let that outward adorning be what makes you beautiful. Let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Now this is very important because you know the Bible is saying here that you're beautiful and what, what should exemplify the, the beautiful hidden man is meekness and quietness. It's not saying meekness and silentness, right? So it doesn't mean that you're just this silent woman that walks 20 steps behind her husband, right? And you can't say anything, you have to talk from behind a curtain. Like in Islam, I think that's what they teach. Is that what they teach? I don't know, I'm making it up now. So it's saying here that what should exemplify a godly woman is you're meek and quiet. So what that means is if you're the loudest person in the room, you're probably not being that ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that there are times where a woman can't be loud, right? But this is what should really identify you, is when people think of you, do they think of somebody that is boisterous or do they think of somebody that is meek and quiet? So the last tip is, you know, this, you know, the way I believe you would win a husband over. Because the Bible's saying here that the husband can be won without any communication, just from the conversation of the wife, right? The lifestyle, the way that she lives. This is the way you ought to win a husband, right? It's, it's your conversation, your holy conversation and that hidden man of the heart, that inward beauty. Um, that's the way you should win them over. Because if you try and win a man over with the outward appearance, you win him over with the fancy hair and the makeup and the, and, and, uh, you know, the, the, the clothing that is basically half naked, you're going to win over the wrong type of men. And I, I don't know about for you guys, but for me, and you know, maybe this is just me, but if, if a woman is dressed inappropriately, I find it a lot harder to approach her because, you know, it's, it's just hard to look at her in the face. It's like, it's like when you go soul winning and a woman comes to the door and she's like half naked. You, you, you just, you're trying to give her the gospel, but she's like standing there half naked. And it's the, it's the same with you. If you dress inappropriately, often there are some guys that would approach you that may be too shy to because of the way you present yourself. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> And that just be, might just be my own experience. Maybe, maybe some guys don't have a problem with that. I don't know. Uh, okay, so it's not wrong to do up your hair or wear jewellery. Just um, don't let that be what makes you attractive. And win him the same way that you would win a husband.